What is going on guys? Pranav here from Redox and this video has been long overdue. I have been trying to do this since October. This is the Knock FI review. So before we start, I just want to tell you, tell everybody out there watching how much I've been overwhelmed by the support I've given. 75 subscribers, 15,000 views, 26,000 watch hours. That is my wildest of dreams come true. I would really love if this video got the same response and there's more videos coming soon. So before, without further ado, let's get into the video. So what is this device? Why did I have it by it? And why am I having it in my hand? And why am I reviewing it now? So there are some questions you may be asking. So first of all, let me start with the prologue. I actually have had a phone which I tried to root and ended up getting it bricked. So I was in the market for a new phone and in a hurry, I was looking for phones. I decided on the Redmi 5A. I wanted a phone which is small because I didn't want to lug around a tablet. I wanted it to be made of metal because I wanted it to be strong. Glass phones are not this strong. You, if you drop it, you're going to shatter both sides. So, and I wanted a cheap phone because I didn't want to be spending my entire life savings on this. So I went for the Redmi 5A. It was not made of metal, but it was not really cheap plastic. It was actually really good plastic. So I was okay with it. And I went to the store, uh, I went headed straight to the Redmi 5A, picked it in my hand, used it, and then I looked around to see if there was any other phones out there, and, well, I saw this. I was like, wait, I, I know this phone, I've considered buying it before, and it decreased in price, and I was like, let me just check it out. After picking the Redmi 5A, which I considered to be a good phone in the hand, this felt like a tank built of metal, exactly the size of my palm. It was like a match made in heaven. Like I fell in love with this phone. I checked the spec list and I was kind of skeptical because it really, really uh, made compromises in the performance specs. But I was okay with it. I mean, I, I'm not going to be playing games on this, I have other phones for that, this is just going to be for communication and occasional media consumption. So I was okay with doing that. I bought it and I used, I've been using it for five months now and well these are my thoughts about it. So I'm going to be critiquing everything on four categories. Build quality, ease of use, uh, if it has a camera, camera quality and the basic other tidbits that I could not fit anywhere. So build quality. So build quality is a strong point in all Nokia devices in that they are really, really well built. This phone is built of metal and I feel like it could take a drop or it could face a bend. I mean, it could go, it could go through jerry-rig everything's home and still be unscathed. I mean, I've not tested it out, but I feel so because it's so strong. I mean, I don't want to break it, but it's so strong. And I feel like if I throw this in my pocket and like fall over, roll around, it's not going to break or anything or burn up in my flame, burn up in flames in my pocket. I feel safe with this. So there you go. And it has a substantial heft to it. The length, width, and the thickness are proportional. And this feels really natural in my hands. And so I'm going to be giving every category, every device I review a score of 10 in every category. And out of 10, this score is 9. So next is ease of use. Ease of use, I'm going to give it a 10 because it's Android and it's Android 1. And where well, is the best it can get? I mean, it has a 5.2 in 720p display that is really good at reproducing colors and really good viewing angles. And well, what more do you need? You have a great screen, you have good touch responsivity, you have awesome Android, stock Android. You can customize it any way you want. I've installed Niagara Launcher on this because I really like it. Um, well, yeah, I, I give it a perfect 10 because it's stock Android and it also gets security updates every month. I, I'm supposed to deduct a point because it doesn't get, it didn't get Pi. As of now, it may be coming in February or March, but it didn't get, it still didn't get by, but I'm not going to take it as a negative because not a lot of people are going to be wanting to be on the latest OS because the next category is performance. Performance. 
that is where this falls short. <laughs> this phone to hit the price range has to make sacrifices somewhere, has to cut corners somewhere. It cut it, the corners on specs. It runs on a measly Snapdragon 430 with 3 gigs of RAM. The 3 gigs of RAM is supposed to be low. But the processor is so weak that you don't even reach the RAM limit before the phone starts to bog down. I've tried playing Free Fire on it, and to be fair, it's okay, but PUBG Mobile is a stretch in all other games. are kind of a stretch. Um, there's this game called um, Critical Ops, and it basically runs okay on this at 60 FPS. Anything higher than that, is, it struggles. Anything lower than that, I don't like playing shooting games less than 60 FPS, PC Monster Race. Um, so in performance, on everyday tasks, it actually is kind of okay because of the Niagara I, I guess it's part of the part they do the launch. The launch is extremely responsive. The launch is extremely responsive. And well, I guess on day-to-day -day tasks, it is okay. But once you start throwing things at it, it kind of loses steam. And well, sometimes I've used this a lot for media consumption and it only has a 720p display. So YouTube will not allow me to go any higher than 720p. But sometimes it has dropped frames or uh, lagged during 720p HD video playback, so that is there to consider. And the next category is camera, and well, what better way to rate the camera than well, using it? So we're just gonna, we're gonna, just gonna switch. Listening to the video and the audio from the Nokia 5, um, I don't know, it's actually not that great for the... Uh, for YouTube, but it's actually great for the price, and this is you can expect this video quality because it's, the only thing is I've added that makes it kind of better is the lighting and the tripod here, so expect the same results. Um, so what are my thoughts on this camera? So basically, what I think is that this is a really good photo camera if we can squeeze the most out of it. If you use third-party applications like there are Google camera ports for this, there are the Nokia 7 8 Pro camera features ports for this, and there's Lightroom camera. So the both the Google camera and the Nokia Pro camera, I do not endorse using it because you have to download it from XDA developers, and it's basically you're trying to, you're trying to call it, like you're trying to take the features from a better phone, trying to load it here, which may cause problems, so it depends. Well, the Lightroom camera I actually like because there are certain caveats to it, like you get Lightroom CC, the photo editing software, which is actually better than any other software on smartphones. You get the, you get raw photo capture, you get better HDR processing, and you also get, well, if you buy it, the cloud storage sync, which is maybe a lifesaver if you decide to do something. Um, for Instagram and other social medias, and by the way, I'm on Instagram, if I didn't say earlier. Check me out, I'm Boku Machine. It's part of my production company, it is Redox Media. It's also produced by that. So, for Instagram, it's actually a really good camera. If you use Lightroom, cam Lightroom, Lightroom camera, and you basically tweak the photos, get, you work around the limitations of this camera, which is dynamic range, you can get pretty good shots out of it. Be sure to keep make keep the ISO low and make sure to have it as steady as possible because there's just no stabilization whatsoever. Your videos, slash photos, and his photos, your photos are gonna turn out better. But for videos, the autofocus is not the best. This may have killed the entire video because of me moving forward the phone might have gotten confused and be like it'd be out of focus for the rest of the video. I have no idea, I'm filming on the rear camera, the front camera is even worse. So the rear camera can do 1080p, it's an f2.0 aperture but it doesn't matter because the autofocus is so bad it takes a pretty long time to focus on near or close objects and focusing on close objects only you can kind of get an idea about the depth of field of this these small sensors and it takes a while so you have to use manual focus. There will be some photos on top. So this is the actual mic on the smartphone. I don't know if it's good or bad. Like I've not recorded a video with this video that, that I'm trying to use the audio because I must probably dub over it or I have a separate audio source recording. 
and well now I have to use the mic because this is how you what you can expect. Um, so basically, this is a good camera for photos, not so good camera for videos, and if you're considering videos or want better dynamic range, go for the Nokia 6.1 or a 7 or the Poco F1. It's kind of a stretch, but it's completely worth it. The amount of features you get for 12,000 rupees, the, the dollar conversion will be put up on screen because I can't convert dollars. I live in India and will use rupees. The 12,000 rupees hike, like the more you pay, you're getting more features. So it's actually better. So it is a much better processor. You go from the Snapdragon 430, which is a very weak processor with a very weak ISP, to the Snapdragon 845, which is like the last gen flagship, the 855 launch. I guess the last gen flagship. It's still a flagship, it's still fast. So, and the 855 phone's not out yet. So, I mean, yeah, we live in wonderful times. There's a rolling TV and there's flexible phones. And well, I'm here stuck here reviewing cheap gadgets, so that's okay. So, uh, my final verdict on this camera is really good photo camera. You can squeeze the most out of it using third party applications like Google Camera, which is ported to this phone and it works perfectly. But I'm not sure it will work. Do the same for everybody. It, it has some finer, minor performance issues. There's the Nokia Pro Camera, which is ported to this, which kind of works better than Google Camera for the performance, but the result, the output is not that good as Google's processing. And the Lightroom camera, well, you it, the raw photo, like the raw capture does not look good, but if you tweak it, work around some things, like put some nice reduction, throw on, throw on your favorite preset or like color, color grade. Is it, called, is it called color grading? I don't know for photos. I don't, I don't know the technical terminology, like add to the colors. You're gonna get a usable photo for Instagram, but you're not, you're not gonna get anything more out of it. Yeah, let's move on to the, well, the actual review part. <laughs> so now you saw how it looked and how it sounded. You will listen to the sound in its microphones. I was not wearing this mic. Um, so you know how it sounds, photography, I also covered that in the video, in that part. And the next one is the other little tidbits that I feel I could say. Battery life, I could say about that, this is the phone, battery life. It has a 2000 milliamp hour battery. It's a very thin phone, so you could not fit a really big battery in it. A low resolution display, with the weak processor, you get awesome battery life. This lasts me two days on moderate usage and one day on heavy usage. I've been using this heavy leaf today and there's still 30% left. It's 11 p.m. and still is 30% left. So it's basically, it's, this is a good phone if you want it to last long because I guess it's a good thing to have a weak processor, I guess. Um, it still didn't get Pi. It's scheduled to get Pi in February or March. I don't know. It's in beta testing now, so it may get even the end of January. I don't know. Um, the call cell reception is actually exceptionally good for the metal build because it is antenna bands only the top at the and the bottom. And we're comparing it to the S7 Edge, which I'm recording on right now. It's a completely glass-backed phone. This is better reception than that. I don't know how, either Nokia is doing wizardry or Samsung is, has gone mad. So the cell reception is better than the Nokia than the glass back S7. So, so it scored a 9.5 in build, 10 in ease of use, 5 in performance and 7 in camera. So totally I guess 30 and a half out of 40. So will I be recommending it? Yes. Everything that is about 30 in my 40 score review gets a pass so it pauses and it act, i'm gonna actually recommend it so if you can get it below hundred dollars this is completely a good phone for the money or if you just want it to be a second phone you just want to keep it as backup use it like that or if it's going to be a first phone i would not suggest if you, you go for this because it's kind of very old now it's more than two years old and it does not it will not get the android q update it, uh, it's not it's, it's not official, it's not promised, so I'm not sure to get it. Android Pi is going to be the last update for this, so... 
and well if you just want a phone that lasts long and have be a backup phone you get this for less than hundred dollars if you can find it used or new depends on how you're gonna find it um, if you can do that then definitely go for it but if it's above hundred well it's kind of not that value for money because there are competitors that do things better than this for the same price like the realme phones and the other phones like the Xiaomi Redmi's and the Poco F1 which is not that more expensive but does a lot better. The only thing you lose is the build quality and that can be covered up by using a case. I even use a case for this. So all you need to do is just put on a case and it's, you forget that. So yeah, what is more, more is to say, I recommend this phone if you can get it below $100. So there you go, a video complete. Thank you for the support you've been giving me. 75 subscribers, 24,000 watch hours, 15,000 views. Those are numbers that were shown to me in my YouTube Studio app. The amount of response I've been getting from my videos is unbelievable. And I would really love to if that support came to this video also. So I really love that. If you like this video, consider liking. If you dislike this video, you know what to do. And if you want to see more of this, consider subscribing. I'm Pranav. This is Redox, signing off.